we are about to get words of inspiration, words of light from our pastor, Reverend John. But I'm going to preface this with asking you all to remember that in only four months' time, you will not be hearing him speak from this platform. So hold on to every word that he says. The door is going to be recording, but hold on. And just as we know that in whatever path he chooses, there's one path, whatever way that path shall look like, he is joyful, peaceful, creative, and wonderful. But I'm saying this because he has said that he will not be coming back to the platform again. So enjoy him as you see him. You will see him everywhere, anywhere, but he is determined that he will not be taking the platform again. And since I will not be on the platform again with him, I took the opportunity to say that. <laughs> okay. So, Reverend John Scott, as always, please come with your love, with your light, with your humor, and with your God presence, and just celebrate the presence of God within you today as you share and lift us up. Thank you. I have to give you a virtual hug, <laughs> Reverend Sonia. <laughs> thank you so much. And good morning, family. Good morning, good morning. Reverend. Wherever I go and whatever I'm doing, I carry each and every one of you in my heart. And I, I, I'm not having mixed feelings because I know and expect each person with whom I've come into contact on this journey, knowing that each one of you, your life is a living sermon, a living testimony to the truth. And as we know in the science of mind, the universe doesn't give us what we want. The universe gives us what we expect. And I expect this teaching to just grow exponentially and to spread through the, world, the earth far and wide so that there is light and there is not a dark place upon the face of the planet. From east to west, from north to south, Above, below, and within the consciousness of humankind, this movement, known as the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, this movement which began with a, an illumined soul called Dr. Ernest Holmes, can only grow exponentially and fill the human race with the beauty of knowing that God, called by many names and worshipped in so many different ways, but God, the one, indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause, is the only presence and the only power there is. Say with me, God is the only presence and the only power there is. God is the only presence and the only power there is. In my life. In my life. In my home. In, in my, my home, in my business, in my business, in the temple of light, in the temple of light, in Jamaica, in Jamaica, in the world, in the world, and throughout the cosmos, and throughout the cosmos. This is our affirmation. This is our expectation, and the universe must respond. Wow, what a thought! And so I've titled my encouragement this morning. What do you expect? So I was at the supermarket and I heard an argument between two people, a gentleman and a lady. I don't know if they had a, a, an intimate relationship, but they obviously knew each other well. And they were having an argument over the vegetable stand. And I don't know what the argument was about, but eventually he said, so what do you expect? What do you expect? And I thought, yes, the universe is asking you the same question. What do you expect, my friend? What do you expect of life? What do you expect of your children and your grandchildren? What do you expect of your spouse? What do you expect of Jamaica? What do you expect of life in general? The 
because the universe will give you not what you want, but what you expect. So I hope he answered that question accurately for that lady over the vegetable stall because she's going to get what she expects and he may not get what he expects <laughs> if he doesn't find a way of resolving whatever the conflict or the disagreement was that was putting a wedge in their relationship. But I wanted to talk this morning a bit about expectations because it is such a powerful spiritual law. And I, I know a young woman, she's a student, and she recently expressed her belief to me that she's destined for an early demise, early death. And why? Because her mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother all died before age 60 of heart, some heart issue. And so she, she said, told me in a very matter-of-fact voice, and so I'm just awaiting the divine will. <laughs> Interestingly, her grandfather is still very much alive and vibrant and well. And so I wanted to know from her what, whether it wasn't better for her to believe that she took take after her grandpapa instead of her grandmama. But no, she was fixated on the idea that early death runs in her family. <laughs> you know, my friends, the organization uh, known as the Science of Mind, originated by Dr. Ernest Holmes, um, teaches some powerful lessons about how we use the tools that have been given us, the faculties of God that have been bestowed upon us. And Ernest Holmes writes, and I quote, there is nothing in the universe that limits us or that would or could desire to limit us. The idea that God is trying our souls to see if we can make it, you know, how we, how, how we handle things. This idea, Holmes says, that God is trying our souls to see whether or not we can make, take it, so to speak, is nonsense. For he says that idea is born in ignorance and in superstition. The true significance, my friends, of the concept of the divine will is that God's will for you is really your will for yourself. And so if we could just get into our consciousness this strong identification with the spirit, this living spirit that dwells within us, and say with every breath as we awaken in the morning and throughout the day, Father, I will to will thy will, for thy will for me is my will for myself. So my friends, what is our expectation of our lives? What do we will for ourselves, for our church, and for our world? Holmes says that, let me see if I can put it this way. He puts it this way. Those, there is a vast difference between waiting in doubt and waiting in certainty of the outcome of the divine will. So we wait for the divine will, we surrender to it. But do we wait in doubt and it, with the, the kind of me mental set and consciousness that we, are, we have no say in the matter? Or do we wait in surrender, knowing that we are co-creators with the Almighty, with the infinite invisible? of every aspect and facet and relationship of our lives. So a positive approach would be to submit to the divine will in a happy awareness that God is with me and God is for me every step of my life's way. This is a positive approach to setting your expectations of the universe. It is a basic concept of the science of mind that the idea of good will always destroy an idea of evil. Whether that idea of evil is an actual reality in our minds, because sometimes you know, we create a whole scenario around the bad things that could happen. Or whether we, we just, for a fleeting moment, succumb to that human tendency and then remind ourselves as students of the truth 
that there is only one will, the will of God, and the will of God is the will for good in all of life and in all of our experiences. Jesus, the great way shower, taught the same principle in a simple way when he said, ask and what it shall be given you. What's the next thing? Seek and ye shall find. Ah, thank you, knock. And what shall happen? It shall be opened unto you. And you know what? You know what has been the big block to our demonstrating this truth? Mankind has chosen to keep such a strong, fearsome hold on the concept of his so-called sinful self that he dares not ask, he feels, lest it may not be given. He dares not seek because he fears he will not find. He dares not knock believing that it will not be opened. And because he chooses to remain convinced that he deserves not the good he longs for, he dares not even hope for it. Such is the tragedy, my friends, of human will, the tragedy of human interpretation of the divine will. And such, again, is the negative total acceptance of the misunderstanding of the divine will. It is not about uh, the will of some capricious, moody, sometimeish kind of being that wakes up in a good mood and gives you what, what you want and at other times withholds it just for sake. For spite, as we say in Jamaica. My friends, dare we this morning, today, right here and right now, believe in the universal good? Dare we yes. do that? Yes. I mean, I'm not convinced. Here are a few. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> Miss, yes, Mr. <Mr>. Poor, sir. <laughs> yes, me hope so. Yes, but me not sure, you know, because the car wouldn't start this morning. Or, yes, you know, me have to go find rent tomorrow. I mean, I don't know where it will come from. But, yes, I believe, I believe. Uh -huh. No. Let us dare to believe in the universal good. Dare we ask for the divine givenness? Let us say together, today I hold up the cup of acceptance. Together, today I hold up the cup of acceptance, and it is filled to overflowing with the divine givenness. And it is filled to overflowing with the divine givenness. Dare we expect divine grace? You know, once I lost it at the, at a, in a store, and they had messed up an order that I had made. And I, I said, well, I'm coming for it. When am I to come for it? And she said, by 3 o'clock. And I said, when I get here, who am I to ask for? And she said, ask for grace. <laughs> I wrote pages in my journal. I needed to ask for grace. I went down, I sat in my car, and I prayed for about 20 minutes. So. <laughs> Give me grace. So dare we ask for the divine grace that we is ours without our having to do anything to deserve the goodness that is the will of God for us. The, divi the divine will then for us is for all good that we can conceive. Let us say the divine will for me is all the good that I can conceive. Let's say that. The, the divine, divine will, will for me is, is all, all the good I that conceive. I can conceive. Please turn to anyone near you and say, the divine will for you is all the good you can conceive. The divine will for you is all the good that you can conceive. <laughs> yes, my friends, you know, we sang I'm choosing heaven today. It is a matter of choice. When we become receptive to the thought that God thinks within us and we embody those thoughts in an expectancy of good, then good can be the only outcome in our lives and in our affairs. Dr. Holmes advises, and I quote, never close your eyes to the fact that God is in everything in his universe and there is good in everything but we often have to search for it, unquote. So friends, we must try to see God in every experience and remember, as Jesus gave us the assurance, 
If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And so this brings me to your assignment. Everyone who attends the Temple of Light know when I speak, I always give an assignment. Some people do it faithfully, some people do it sometimes, but if you even do it once, make this be the one time today. Because your assignment this week is to bring to mind a challenge that is facing you. It doesn't have to be something monumental, just a simple decision you have to make this week. But bring to mind a challenge that is facing you and just in a few words, jot it down in your journal or on a piece of paper so that you give it, you can look at it in black and white. You know, so, you know when you put down your thoughts on paper, there is a kind of connection that doesn't happen when you just keep it in your, in, your, in your mind. So write it down in your journal, and then take a few deep breaths, and gently close your eyes, and ask spirit to reveal the blessing that this situation holds for you. I normally just put, Lord, show the way. And uh, you know, when we use the word law, another word for Lord is law. Law, show me the way. Sometimes our subconscious mind, our intuition, the intuition within us, knows without the process of, of thinking, the logical sequence that happens in our brains, sees beyond the three-dimensional world that we live in and knows without process of reasoning the right steps to take, the right action, the right way to go. So just say, Lord, in this situation, Show the way. And when you are done, simply give thanks. And don't worry, sometimes things come to you that mightn't even make sense in the moment. But this process of visioning, of saying, you know, what is spirit's highest idea in this situation, in this challenge I am facing? If you just remain open and receptive, spirit will show the way. Friends, Good is ours for the asking and for the taking, for the accepting, but the choice has to be ours. I think about it like going to a, a buffet, you know, and if the table is spread with all the goodies you can imagine. If you're a vegetarian, there are vegetarian delicacies. Uh, if you are a, a, a meat eater, there is every form of, of, of recipe and dish that you could possibly imagine. And you go into the dining room and you sit and you notice that people are coming back to their table with their, their plates laden, sometimes too full. And you're saying, well, hungry, you see? Then get up and go onto the table now. You have to go and choose from what is spread, the table of life spread before you, what you want, what gives you pleasure, what titillates your imagination. I want to try something new, but I also must have you know, whatever it is, you get to choose. It is the biggest gift. And the power of choice is really in your hands. There's a wonderful Sufi teaching story, which I've t I told some years ago, but like every good teaching story, it's worth repeating. It's about two little boys, two mischievous little boys in a village who hatch a plot to embarrass the village a visiting sage who has come to the village and is going to be um, holding a village circle where he will share his wisdom with them. And the plot was that they would ca capture a young nightingale and have it in their hands, and they would say to him, oh, wise one, is this nightingale alive or dead? If he said it was alive, they would squash it in their hand and let it drop to the floor dead. If he said it was dead, they would let it fly free and either which way, the sage would look like a, you know, like him never know what I'm talking about. Would look like, as we say in Jamaica, a idiot. And so the day of the village circle arrived and the little boys took their place, you know, up front. And um, when he had finished his, his, um, his encouragement, he invited questions from the crowd. And so they approached him and said, oh, wise one, what do you think I have in my hands? And he said, well, Judging from the tail feathers protruding between your fingers, 
I, I would say it looks like uh, it seems to be a young nightingale. And the little boy said, and a wise one, he said with a smirk, is it alive or is it dead? And the sage closed his eyes and smiled. And when he opened it, he looked at them and said, it's in your hands, children. It's in your hands. And so that is my message to you this morning, my friends. The choices you make are in your hands. And we need to ask spirit for the guidance to know which way to go sometimes. So that's your assignment. Choose a, a challenge that you have and know that the choice is in your hands and ask spirit to guide you which way to go. Last Sunday, you know, Sandra Cooper gave us an update from our Thriving Ministry Council on what's been happening with the implementation of our, our strategic plan. Unfortunately, we had issues with our live streaming, and so folks online missed much of it. And in any event, so much is happening that we all need time to take it all in. So I'm going to ask that the report be emailed to you all, and then I'm going to invite you all to a village circle on the fifth Sunday of July. Does, does July have five Sundays? Yes. Um, so that we can, we can talk as a family. I hope we'll have it on Zoom as well so that we can talk as a family, ask questions of our action teams, and give them our, our support and our guidance and our feedback and ideas as well. Because the future of this organization really is up to us. And Sandra talked about, um, you know, many, many ideas and many, and many programs in, in, that are in, in progress and spoke about huge sums of money needed. But I want to say to you that there are also little ways in which you can be involved. For example, we are just um, engaging a, a, a student from the university for the summer to help us to, to beef up our social media presence. And you know that social media is the way to get the word out. It's the way of the 21st century. And so we are, this young student is willing to, to give us the summer and to do this for us. We need to give her a stipend, a, a honorarium. You might feel, if you feel moved to perhaps um, contribute in this way, which is not a fortune, just give me a ring or um, email the temple at templeoflight at cwjamaica.com and, um, and, and let us know. So there are little ways we can be involved but we want every person who has been blessed by this teaching. Whether now, long time, okay, I've been here from 1981, but those that just come and those that are um, experiencing the power and the empowerment and the beauty and the love and the truth that this center stands for and that the gift of givingness which this church gives and shares with the world. We want everybody who has been touched in any way by the science of mind and spirit to become involved in co-creating with God a temple of light center for spiritual living that grows from strength to strength. No matter, people will come and people will go, including the pastor, but that the right persons are always on spot and on time to take this teaching far and wide, so that through the earth, far and wide as we sang this morning, the light of God, the light of truth, the light of love, the light of joy, the light of liberty, the light that is the unique and beautiful expression of Jamaica, colors the world with the beauty of holiness. And so my friends, Focus on your expectation and speak your word for the goodness that you know is yours by divine right of being. And trust me, the universe has your back and the universe will respond when you express what you require and what you expect. 
knowing that you do not do this alone. You couldn't even want it and expect it if it wasn't for the fact that God, the living Spirit Almighty, does it through you to its own honor and glory. And so goodness, abundant prosperity, truth and beauty are God's will for us individually and, and as a community. Truly, I have not seen nor e'er heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But remember, we must choose. It's in your hands, children. It's in your hands. Namaste. Namaste. Wow, 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 wow. How can anyone ever dare to summarize that talk, which is already summarized at the end? But I just want the, that the sentence to just go with us. The quality of our lives is in our hands, is in the expectancy. If we know who God is, what God is, and where God is, and our relationship with God, we can expect only good and allow that good to be that which comes to us on time and in order according to what is perfect for us at any particular time. Isn't it fabulous to be able to walk, as Reverend John said, walk this earth with the certainty that godness and goodness is the gift that has been given to us. Wonderful. Thank you again, Reverend John. Woo.